I'll start recording now. Good morning. This is Wesley Welburn, and we're here in the sanctuary of Strasburg United Methodist Church. My son-in-law, the Reverend John Haynes, is the pastor, and some weeks ago he asked me to preach for him uh, this Sunday morning because he was going to be at a conference, and uh, uh, the conference has been has been uh, is is not happening now. And John's here in the sanctuary with me, but uh, uh, but and I'm excited to get a chance to preach this this message to you. I, uh, when we got word that services would be canceled this morning, I was disappointed because I I enjoy preaching. And I look forward to bringing this message to you. And uh, quite frankly, I, I believe that the passage of the message for this morning is one that really speaks to what we're uh, experiencing at this time. And so I really look forward to preaching it. And then we got word that the service would be canceled and I was deeply disappointed. But then John said, well, uh, we can do this. We can do this. Uh, we can tape it uh, we, and we can send it out electronically. And, and I thought to myself, well, what do you know? We are in the 21st century. We can do this. And so here I am, and I'm presenting this message to you, and I, uh, and I thank you for listening. And I, and I hope and pray that, uh, this, ser that this, ser this message will speak to you. The passage I want to preach on this morning is uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. And these are the words. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the, the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the season of Lent, I and mean, during the season of Lent, we talk about the trials and temptations of life, and we examine ourselves to see how we're dealing with them. And Paul speaks here to the trials of life. You know, generally, during Lent, we, we talk about temptations. And of course, we know the way to deal with temptations, and that is to, just to turn away from them. But how do we deal with trials? Well, trials are very different. The way we deal with trials is by facing them, by dealing with them. And uh, Paul tells us here how to deal with the trials of life. And how do we do that? He tells us to do something very strange. And I'm going to try to explain to you how you can do this because I know it's going to sound strange to you. But he says to boast in our sufferings. Uh, how do you boast in your sufferings? How do you boast about a trial, about the trials of life, the difficulties of life, the hard times? How can you boast about going through a hard time? Well, the fact of the matter is that we do it all the time. Uh, we just don't think about it. In this part of the country, I know that your parents and your grandparents at some time or another have told you the story of how they had to walk to school in the snow. And we go, they go on to say, and it was uphill, and of course it was uphill both ways, both come, going and coming from school. Uh, now, what were they doing? What are they doing when they tell that story? They're boasting. They're, they're bragging about their hardship. Uh, and what, what are they saying? They're saying, we endured, uh, and we are stronger for it. Now, in my part of the country where I grew up, uh, in, in uh, South Texas, my parents and grandparents didn't talk about going to school in the snow. There is no snow down there. But they talked about walking to school uh, in dust storms as they avoided the rattlesnakes. Same story, same idea, still bragging. We do brag about our, our, our hardships, our trials. I, I know as couples, uh, uh, as I talk with my wife, I would remember the early days uh, when our children were small. And we talk about uh, how difficult it was. Uh, there wasn't enough money, and we had all the stresses and strains of, of uh, raising small children, and we brag about it. We, we survived. 
and, and we're proud of ourselves. And we know that we be, that's, that is when we became mature adults as we went through the hardship of that difficulty. And that's the reason we boast about our sufferings because suffering, hardship, is the way to maturity. It's the way to grow. It's the way to become stronger, more mature persons. And as we walk with Christ, we become more Christian, stronger Christians as we endure the hardships of life. And so, yeah, we, we can boast in our suffering, uh, and we should, as long as we have the assurance that we are walking with God and we have the confidence that God is with us, we can endure the hardships of life, and God turns these hardships into blessings. We're going through a hard time in our nation right now, in the world, not in our nation, in the world. The world is going through a pandemic, and this is a very difficult time. It's challenging in every area of our lives, and there's a certain amount of fear, uh, and we're having, to, we're having to learn how to live with, in a circumstance that we're not accustomed to, and it's painful, it's difficult. But I will tell you with absolute certainty that a few years from now, we will look back and we will be bragging about our suffering and we will say we survived. We'll say it with a certain amount of sadness because we'll remember those who didn't survive, but we will look back and say we made some changes. We learned some lessons that we needed to learn, some changes we need to make, and we're a better people in a better world because we came together and battled this uh, virus and we won the battle. So I want to encourage you and the world to stand up and be strong. And we need to stand together and work together. And if we'll do so, and, and if we'll do so with the assurance that in all things God does work together, does work for good for those who, who love God and who are called, we can be certain of a victory. We have a, a battle to fight, and we must stand up to it and do what needs to be done. Listen to the people who know, what, know how to deal with it. Do what we're told to do, and not be afraid, not turn away, not, to, not reject the reality of what, what we're facing, but stand up to it and face it. And do it without fear, without panic. Some years ago, I saw a movie that demonstrated how panic can turn uh, the most, uh, a small problem into a big problem. And certainly that's always a danger uh, if, we, if we panic. And in this movie, it's set in uh, Canada uh, during a bleak, cold, hard winter a man who's a widower who has a, a children aging in range from a teenager down to small children uh, has found that uh, they've run out of food. And so he tells his children, I've got to go out and hunt for, for, for meat. And you stay here in the cabin. There's plenty of firewood. Nothing can harm you. You'll be safe. And I'll be back uh, when, I, when I find something that, uh, that we can eat. And so he leaves. And as he's gone, a pack of wolves uh, surrounds the cabin. Uh, they smell the warmth and they smell uh, the, the children. And, and so the wolves are hungry. And so the, the wolves surround the cabin. But there's nothing they can do except scratch and, and whine and, and bark. And, and the, the children are safe inside. Except they become frightened. They're concerned about the, they're afraid of the wolves who are outside the cabin. And the uh, oldest, uh, the teenage boy, decides he would do something about it. He's going to take action. And so he gets an old rifle, uh, and, he, uh, and he's going to shoot the wolves. And the only way he can do that is by breaking out a window to shoot at the wolves. Well, of course, he takes his shot and misses the wolf. And 
by breaking out the window, he's made a way for the wolves to come into the cabin. And so the wolves begin to, to jump through the windows and the children run over to the fireplace and grab wood out of the fireplace to beat the wolves back. And of course they set the cabin on fire. And as the cabin is burning down, uh, all their safety and security is gone. Uh, they're saved when their father comes back and drives the wolves away. What happened? They went from having the security of a cabin to being in great danger because they panicked. Uh, we don't need to panic, do we? Uh, I was in the store the other day, I was turned down an aisle, and half the aisle was empty. There was nothing there. Guess which aisle it was? The toilet tissue aisle. Do you think somebody's panicking? I think so. I think so. We don't need to panic. Everything we have is there. We just need to hunker down, take care of one another, check on one another uh, by, by, uh, by phone, uh, and, and it all will be well eventually. And we'll be better people as a result. We'll grow stronger. You know, they, uh, they were talking about who should be, uh, who, who is in danger from the, from the virus. And what they're saying is, oh, don't worry. This is only going to affect the older people, the ones with, uh, with health problems, those who, uh, who have heart issues or lung issues or have, have transplant or uh, 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 those who have an impaired immune system. And I'm sitting there listening to them and I'm going, hmm, let me see. An impaired immune system, transplant, older, uh, heart condition. You know, I think they're talking about me. And they are. And there's a lot of, a lot of our folks uh, who are older and who have these issues. And, and so this is not reassuring, but I want to tell you something. Us older folks aren't afraid of death. We're not concerned about that. You don't get to be an older person without having faced death uh, on several occasions. And one of the things you learn when you face death is that death is not to be feared. I uh, was I worked in Lydia's closet as a volunteer one day a week and I was sitting there the other day and one of our other volunteers, uh, Nancy, came in and she has a, a shirt that has a message on it. And the message says, I've been a mall, I've been a grandma, I've been a great grandma. Nothing scares me. You know, that's the, that's the blessing of going through hardships. When you've been through hardships, you learn that you can deal with them and you're not afraid of them. Uh, suffering produces endurance. Endurance and endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And we have hope because we have been through the hardships. We know what it is to suffer. And we know that we can endure. And we become characters, let me tell you. Most of the older folks I know that have, that have lived life successfully, they become characters because they can laugh in the face of difficulties and they don't lose their sense of humor. That's the message of, of Easter. You know, we, we, I, when we say hope, we always have to remind folks that when the Bible talks about hope, there, it's not hope in the sense of, boy, I hope this works out. No, it's hope that says, I know it's going to be fine. How do we know? Is it because everything just works out? No, that's not what we're talking about. What we're saying is that we trust God to work things out. That God will bring good out of every situation. That truly in all things, God does work for good for those who trust God and who love God and who serve God and God's purposes. Isn't that the message of Easter? I don't want to get too far into Easter today. This isn't Easter. We want to save the joy of Easter for Easter Sunday. 
But let's, let's face facts. Uh, I love preaching Easter. That was, that was always my favorite Sunday of the year to preach. And I probably will never preach an Easter Sunday again because I'm retired. And I don't think John's going to ask me to preach on Easter Sunday or anybody else. I wouldn't. I would not give up my pulpit on Sunday, or Easter Sunday. So I'm going to take just a little bit, of, a little moment here to preach a little Easter Sunday sermon. The message, one of the messages of Easter is that life is greater than death, that God's power is greater than the power of destruction, and that we have life because Christ lives, we can live. And so we face death without fear, knowing that death is not the final word, that just as Christ was resurrected on Easter, so we will be resurrected. And not only that, but every time we face a cross, and there are crosses, the hardships of life are crosses on a daily basis. Every time we face a cross, we know that we'll be resurrected from that cross. And so we live our lives without fear. And that makes all the difference. When you live life without fear, you have the hope that makes life good. And you can give thanks in all things. And you can boast in your suffering. A preacher tells a story about a man who uh, had a business. And uh, this man had built the business from the beginning. He was the owner. And the business uh, had, had prospered and done well. And he was uh, near retirement. And one day the preacher got word that the man's business had suffered a major setback, setback, a serious setback. And so he rushed over to be with the man to offer him encouragement and support. He expected to find the man deep in depression uh, and, and concern and, and, and hopelessness. But when he got there to the man's office, the man greeted him with a great big smile and said, Preacher, come in, come in. And, and they visited and and, and had a great conversation, and the preacher said, but I, I need, to, need to ask you something. I came here expecting you to be deeply depressed by what you're going through. You're, you're probably going to lose your business. How, how are you so happy? And the man said, well, I'll tell you, preacher, I've been through a lot in my life. I've been through a lot of hardships. And in every instance, I've simply turned them over to the Lord and every time, God has turned my hardships into blessings. And you know, it almost seems like that the more difficult the hardship, the greater the blessing. This is a terrible hardship. This is a bad one. And I can hardly wait to see what kind of blessing he's going to bring out of this one. That's boasting in our hardships, boasting in our troubles, even while we're going through them. And that's true faith. When you've been through the hard times, you can deal with life. One time, I had a, had a family in my church who went through the worst of times. We all know that the most painful thing that a family can experience is to lose a child. Uh, this couple had uh, two children. Two, they were both uh, teenagers. One day, one, the, the boy came in and was not feeling well. He said, I'm going to bed early tonight. And the next morning, when his mother checked on him, he was very, very sick. She rushed him to the hospital. And later that day, he died. It was one of the, one of the most devastating experiences that I've had as a pastor. And certainly this family was devastated by it. But they were people of great faith. And as I watched them and cared for them over the months following, I saw how that faith gave them the strength to endure this terrible loss. Some months after 
the death of this child, I got word that this man was, uh, could possibly lose his job. And so I went over to him and said, how are you doing? How are you dealing with the possibility that you might lose your, your, your position at, at, the, at your work? And he looked at me and he said, Pastor, I've lost my son and I've endured that. The loss of a job is nothing to worry about. Isn't it amazing how when you've been through hard times, you learn what's really important? You grow up, you mature, you become a stronger, bigger, better person because you know what's important and what's not important. You don't worry about the little things because the big things uh, are what's important and you know that God will give you victory. Good news, in all things, God works for good for those who love God. In all things, God brings a blessing, even the hard times, if we simply have faith. We have victory because our God is faithful. And so hardships produce endurance. Suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint because our God is faithful. Amen.